Imagine the possibilities of being able to travel back through time. And I don't just mean going back and reading that incredible ice cream sundae you had last month. I'm talking about a trip much further back. Time travel may not be possible right now, but we can use our knowledge of the past to paint a pretty good picture. Let's set the clock back one million years ago and take a day trip to see our planet as it once was. Amazing. Picture this, your time machine whirs down to a halt, you take the keys out of the ignition and step out into the brisk morning air of planet Earth one million years ago. The good news is you'd be able to breathe. The air a million years ago was similar to present day, though there was less CO2 in the atmosphere. I hope you brought a jacket though, because it's cold out. On average, temperatures were 18 degrees Fahrenheit colder than they are now. That means it's about 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This is because the last ice age was in full swing a million years ago. It spanned a period beginning 2.6 million years ago and ended around 12,000 years ago. And it didn't just make a difference to temperature. It made a difference, obviously, to the amount of ice on Earth, and as a result, to sea levels. As the ice caps were much, much larger than they are now, a much higher percentage of Earth's water was trapped within them. Because of this, sea levels were around 410 feet lower globally. That means if you time-traveled from a beach and landed in the same place a million years ago, you might find yourself on a vast plain, or even looking out over a mountain range that's submerged underwater in the present. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge, for example, is the longest mountain range in the world. Right now, it's mostly submerged, save for a few islands including Iceland and St. Helena. A million years ago, much more of the ridge's volcanic islands would have been above sea level, changing the topography of the Earth considerably. In the North American region we know today, Canada would have been totally covered in ice, while the Great Salt Basin that makes up Utah would be a huge lake. And cases of sunburnt Florida locals taking their alligators to the Wendy's drive through would be astronomical, seeing as Florida would be about double its current size. Meanwhile, if you travel to the area that is now the UK, you'd find yourself in a raised area of land within Europe. In the rest of the world, Japan and Southeast Asia's many islands would be connected, forming a thick hook of land almost reaching Australia. Let's assume your time machine doubles as an extremely speedy vehicle, allowing you to take in a fair amount of the prehistoric Earth. Once you've had your fill of the geography, you might begin to get a little lonely. Don't worry, there's plenty of life to keep you company. There are even a few people around. Well, sort of. There were a couple of species of human-esque hominids on Earth a million years ago. Homo antecessor, a hominid species that existed for about 400,000 years, from 1.2 million to 800,000 years ago, were wandering about in Europe. Homo erectus, which means upright man, emerged around 1.89 million years ago according to fossil records, and were far more widespread. Though widespread may be a little inaccurate. A 2009 study from the University of Utah suggested that our ancestors' worldwide population was little more than 55,000 a million years ago. And that's including multiple species, such as Homo ergaster and Homo erectus. In many ways, we were an endangered species. Homo erectus were the first species known to look pretty much like people. They had long legs, short arms, and torsos, and they moved nomadically from Africa into Asia and possibly even Europe. We know they used tools, including stone hand axes. Human-like apes had already been using tools for around a million years at this point. So a particularly friendly host may be able to cut you off a chunk of mammoth for dinner. Experts estimate that manipulation of fire began between 1.5 million and 790,000 years ago, which means you might be even able to cook the mammoth meat at their campfire. I wouldn't advise it though. This strange behavior would probably freak your hosts out, as the earliest evidence for cooking food is only from as recently as 700,000 years ago. Freaking out any of our ancestral species would be a bad idea as you could find yourself on the receiving end of some basic yet skillfully used stone weaponry. Homo erectus and those like them were not apex predators, and were in direct competition with other animals for food. They were also in danger of becoming food themselves, so suspicion and hostility would be fairly likely. 
probably best to keep your distance, as even a Navy SEAL would likely perish against an angry group of Homo erectus. Unless he'd brought a machine gun, of course. Despite their likely suspicion of outsiders, early humans weren't uncaring. Evidence indicates they cared for their old and sick. If you were looking for intellectual discussion, though, you might be out of luck with old Homo erectus. There are theories that rudimentary language emerged with Homo erectus, possibly as far back as 1.75 million years ago. But you wouldn't be sitting around discussing hilarious cultural differences with these guys. After all, even if they did have language, you're only here for a day, so good luck figuring out how to translate it. Regardless, if you wanted to find anything vaguely resembling a human a million years ago, your best bet would be to head to the lower reaches of Asia, Africa, or to the Mediterranean. Conditions were fairly temperate there even during the Ice Age, which is why the area eventually came to be known as the Cradle of Civilization. But humans, a relatively insignificant speck in the ecosystem, paled in comparison to the other life on Earth one million years ago. Depending on where your time machine landed, the local fauna could be pretty terrifying. In Southeast Asia, for example, you'd find Gigantopithecus, the largest ape that ever lived. These guys stood at about 10 feet tall and walked upright. They're thought to have been carnivores, but I wouldn't stick around to snap a picture of Bigfoot's ancient cousin. I've learned enough from those endless King Kong remakes. Unfortunately for you, XXL dangers weren't a rare or localized phenomenon, as being giant was in fashion a million years ago. If you headed to the Americas, you'd find Megatherium, or the Giant Sloth. These absolute units were up to 20 feet long and had unusually heavy and robust skeletal systems. These sloths weren't as cute as the evolutionary Ralph Wiggums we know today. They may have eaten meat, swiping prey with their huge curved claws, and unfortunately, you'd make the perfect tasty morsel. Best to keep out of Megatherium's way, as well as the giant flat-faced bears that were abundant throughout most of the world. Not to mention the flat-faced bear's closest competitor, the North American lion, which often approached the size of polar bears. Comparatively, the woolly mammoths you'd run into wouldn't be all that big. They were about the same size as modern-day elephants, but a lot furrier and with shorter ears to protect them from the cold. The open plains of Europe and America would be full of these marvelous elephantine ancestors, who lived in a fairly diverse ecosystem alongside other creatures, like the iconic saber-toothed tiger. Despite the danger, these animal-dense zones would be worth seeing, as the present-day diversity is nowhere near the levels of one million years ago. As humans grew in prominence, we wiped many of these species out, and massively simplified the array of mammals on Earth. But what about the birds? You'd likely encounter many of them, as our avian friends were thriving during the Pleistocene period, which you'd be slap-bang in the middle of a million years ago. But you'd have more to worry about than seagulls stealing your ice cream. In the Pleistocene period, the gigantic host eagle made New Zealand its home, preying on flightless birds called moa, which grew as tall as 12 feet. Needless to say, a six-foot human would offer little more resistance than a chicken nugget for a host eagle. There was also an abundance of reptiles, with giant crocodiles, snakes, lizards, and tortoises in abundance. All of this means getting bitten, clawed, or otherwise mangled by an animal is a possibility during your day trip. If you have any hopes of surviving, you'd better come prepared. That includes medicinal supplies as well as modern weapons, because you're not going to find any advanced medical practices amongst Homo erectus or other human-like apes, even if you do befriend them. With the ancient strains of microbes and bacteria you're likely to encounter, which modern humans have lost all immunity to, you'd better have a pretty hefty first aid kit on hand. And hose yourself down before you get back in your time machine. The last thing our present time needs is for you to bring something nasty back with you. While the critters were spectacular, the flora was relatively normal a million years ago. A few of the more ancient forests had already existed for a while some of which by our own time have disappeared. Others still exist and have done for more than a hundred million years, such as the lowland rainforests of Borneo. You could also pop in and visit the Amazon rainforest, which even a million years ago was already ancient. It had recently celebrated its 54 millionth birthday, so make sure you pack about 400 tons of birthday candles to cover each year. 
While cutting your way through the thick brush of the Amazon, the bright side is that you'd be unlikely to encounter those gigantic insects we often associate with prehistoric times. Luckily for you, those began to die out 150 million years ago. The ones you might encounter would be similar in size to those on Earth today. The other fauna I mentioned already, however, mean your forested hikes are anything but a walk in the park. But rainforests weren't the only places harboring trees and plants. Throughout the rest of the world, you'd find scattered pines, yew trees, and conifers, along with the first few broad-leafed trees. The main difference from our own time was the relative sparseness of these trees. Much of the earth, where it wasn't iced over, was open grassland. Ice Age climates create the perfect conditions for huge, expansive grassy plains rather than dense forests. This was the case with a considerable amount of the Earth's surface, so the likelihood is that you'd have very few places to hide away. Out there in the plains, you're in prime position to become lunch for a giant bird or an American lion. And human meat doesn't get much fresher than a million years before its expiry date. The odds of surviving a day a million years ago seem stacked against even a well-prepared time traveler without hiding out in a hopefully unoccupied cave. But with enough planning, equipment, and a rapid flying vehicle, it might be possible. The experience would be incredible, allowing you to check out creatures whose real appearances we can only guess at from the fossils they leave behind. And of course, only a fraction of creatures that die on Earth are fossilized, so you'd likely witness creatures entirely unknown to science. You might even find another lost ancestor species of ours. Whether you made it through the day or not, you'd likely see some truly fascinating stuff. The world a million years ago was pretty different from our own, yet still recognizable in some ways. After all, a million years is barely a blink in terms of the Earth's age. Our planet has been around for 4,500 times that, 4.5 billion years in total. A million years is really just the beginning, barely a walk to the grocery store for the curious time traveler. Be careful if you fire up your time machine once more to go further into the past though, things only get weirder. And survival only gets harder. And those time paradoxes can add up. Would you take a trip to the distant past if you had the chance? Which region of the world would you visit? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.